it's Jennifer from Yellow Brick Road Firm, and today we're uh, live. Uh, we are in episode six, I believe, of edible gardening for kids, families, adults, beginners, whoever wants to join in. It's uh, all good. So um, today we're starting out in the brooder. So I just thought you'd like to see that uh, those laying hens that we have that add to the farm with compost and um, their eggs, of course, that's the main main byproduct of, a, of having a hen, but they also add with the compost. They also add with turning the ground over. Um, they are a wonderful addition to the farm. So we have in here, we have 20 baby chicks, and these chicks are red and black sex links. So this is called a brooder. And again, it's Jennifer from Yellow Brick Road Farm. And this, we are in the brooder this morning. We're gonna head to the garden in a minute, but I just thought you'd like to see the chicks. Let's see. Oh. So this is what's called a brooder. And a brooder means that the chicks are, uh, they would normally be under a hen, a broody hen. They're not under a hen because we've bought them from a hatchery. Um, we do hatch out a few of our own chicks, but they're mostly like a barnyard mix, and I like to get um, proper layers. Um, so I tend to uh, just do it this way. Um, this little guy's over here. So these are red and black sex links, and they are approximately a week old now. They'll be a week old tomorrow. So we get them as day olds from Ocean Breeze theme store in Yarmouth. And we deal with them a lot. They're wonderful, Adam and Gary and Ryan. Um, we have uh, 20 of these layers. Now these won't actually lay eggs for about five months. So these are baby chicks, so we'll look after them. So we're gonna brood them. So this is what's called a brooder, so that if the mama hen was broody, she would be have chicks under her, she would be looking after her chicks. So because she has, she keeps the chicks warm, she teaches them how to be chicks. Um, because we don't have a mama hen that's gonna sit with them right now, um, because if, if they're not broody, sometimes they'll hurt them, they will, don't understand. So we just try to keep them separate for a while so we'll keep them in the brooder for about three weeks until they get all feathered out you can see their feathers are already starting to grow so once they get all feathered out we will start we'll open up this little door here and we will let them have some outdoor time and they will learn how to be chicks and we will teach them how to be how to be chicks um, and the other chickens will get used to them being there and then eventually we'll just take down the fence so that's how we introduce new chicks to the farm I usually introduce about uh, 20 uh, each year um, because I lose some due to old age um, we have about 50 60 layers um, on the farm at any given time so they're <laughs> they're very fun um, and this this light keeps them warm um, as if it was a mother hen okay so they're gonna need this light until they get feathers and they can keep themselves warm. So we have some water here, we have some uh, medicated chick starter, and that's what they eat. Uh, later on, I will put in some pieces of grass with some dirt so that they can start to get used to uh, grass and eating that soil. That's how chickens digest their food. They eat uh, soil and they get little stones in their belly and that grinds up their food. So actually they need uh, soil and they need dirt in order to uh, have a healthy digestive system. So that is where we're at right now so again it's jennifer from yellow brick road farm and we are in the brooder this morning for episode six of edible gardening for uh kids and and uh, adults and families um we are loving uh the fact that we've got new babies on the farm again we will be getting uh some uh, these are egg layers as i mentioned they are red and black sex links they're a heritage breed um we will have them uh, in this brooder for approximately three weeks under the heat lamp. When they get a little older, a little more feathered out, I'm going to start removing the lamp for a little bit at a time. I'll start rising it, uh, raising it up so that eventually they get used to not having as much heat. Um, I will uh, eventually start turning it off for periods of the day, turning it only on at night. Um, and then eventually I will just turn it off at about three weeks of age. I will turn off the heat lamp and they will be able to uh, be acclimatized to, to our climate and uh, they'll be getting ready to go outside for short periods of time. 
So that is uh, the brooder and that is baby chicks, which are always so fun. We've got 50 more coming tomorrow, but those are actually meat birds. So those are what's called a Cornish cross and those will be for meat and they only stay on the farm for eight weeks. And uh, we raise 80% of our own meat um, between our location here and our location in Welshtown, um, on my uh, family farm. So we raise uh, turkeys, uh, chickens, and pigs uh, for meat. And my uncle raises uh, some beef. And we will uh, be sharing that with him this year. And we will uh, source whatever else we need from uh, other farmers in the area so that is uh, and sometimes we'll do trades which is always fun so we we uh, primarily I'm down to one meat hen in the freezer so it's really important that we start getting uh, into production for our meat hens um, so that we can eat uh, you know as much as we can farm to table um, that's really important now uh, to in order for you to uh, you know sort of know where your food comes from so again these are egg layers and these will grow a little slower these won't grow as fast as the meat birds the meat birds really uh you know they take eight weeks start to finish and they have different needs than the uh red and black sex links the red and black sex links are uh, uh egg layer and uh, sometimes you can use them for dual purpose which means you can use them for meat and eggs okay and um but uh you know science has allowed us to be able to uh, you know sort of hone in on what's best for uh, efficiency and what's best for uh, you know growing and and makes the best of your um, money and your time right so this is uh, this is the, what we're doing here on the farm this week um, we've got the brooder ready we went and got the chicks last week um, and we will be getting 50 more tomorrow for uh, meat those will be kept for meat they'll stay on the farm here in the brooder for three weeks um, in a different brooder and then they will go out on pasture actually so they will go into what's called a chicken tractor and they will be moved all around in pasture on our family farm so, oh, come here, there, so it's there. So from Yellow Brick Road Farm, we're gonna say goodbye to the brooder. Oh, although I dislike that very much. And it's important when you handle chicks. And we do not kiss our chickens, okay? So kids out there, do not kiss your chickens. Um, chickens can, <laughs> chickens can carry um, a, uh, uh, sort of uh, pathogens and uh, bacteria that is okay for them to have but it's not okay for humans it's called uh, salmonella and if you uh, handle chickens you want to always make sure you wash your hands good after okay so um, anyway you and we do not kiss our chickens here do we no <laughs> no kissing the chickens so we just uh, will handle the chickens and I will make sure that I wash my hands after the video so over close up the brooder and we're going to take you over by the horse shelter remember guys this horse shelter was being built to, oh sorry you keep going mm -hmm. um this horse shelter was being built um this week and it is almost done guys look at this so it's coming along beautifully nice big shelter for the horses it stood up to the hurricane um, so we're really happy about that and uh, that's going to uh, be a wonderful addition to the farm and uh, it's going to be wonderful to have uh, a place to put all of our pack and things like that. So that's what's happening uh, today. They're kind of going to finish this up um, and we've got nice red siding on there. Yeah, so that is the new horse shelter. Okay, so moving into the garden into the garden today and there is the reluctant farmer he is taking apart the rabbit cage that has been in here for lots and lots of time and so he is <laughs> camera shy <laughs> and he is taking apart that because that's gonna we're gonna repurpose this and use it as a duck house so the top part's gonna be a duck house. We're gonna take all that out um, in order to get it out of here. So we, t and we're gonna build a new rabbit house by the horse shelter um, when uh, that is moved. So my dad will move that horse shelter over by the pond. So what's going on in the, in the garden? So you guys look, look at all the mulch. So we've got this lovely mulch down. I've got, uh, actually, why don't we just pan the whole thing? 
Okay. So good morning, guys. It's Jennifer from Yellow Brick Road Farm, and we are panning the whole garden here. So we'll just take a little tour through. So we've got some mums coming up. There, we've got some mums coming up. We're gonna plant some herbs in here after. Cabbage, very slow to germinate, but it's coming. Okay, there. So the cabbage is coming up. We've got some cabbage coming up. We're gonna thin that out. We've got some lettuce and we've got some leeks coming. Okay, so that's very exciting. We've got some leeks coming, some cabbage. Of course, our chives, and this is a blossom on a chive, guys. Now, chives, what do you put chives in? They're kind of like onions, so you can put them in anything, but I like to use them in scrambled eggs. So I don't know about you guys today, but that is what I would love to chop some of these, and the more you chop them off, the more they grow. So these are gonna be blossoms soon. So these are gonna be blossoms, and when they are blossoms, you can use those blossoms to put them in vinegar and make like onion flavored vinegar. You can also take those blossoms and uh, let them go to seed, put them in a paper bag, and then you are going to save those seeds for next year and you can plant more. So that's kind of fun. So then we've got, of course, our mint. Let's see what's happening. Oh, look at that. Everything's coming up beautifully, guys. Yeah, a little slower than I had hoped, but that's not, that's to be expected. We just had snow here. <laughs> we just had snow here in Nova Scotia on Saturday. And uh, so that has been um, a little bit of a setback for the garden. But look at this tatzoi, guys. So that's tatzoi, and that's a Chinese vegetable. And the leaves are amazing. So my mom planted this as well this year and I've already had a salad. She's got a greenhouse, so I've already had a salad. I've already had a salad with this um, from my mom and it is delicious. So that is very good. So I'm really excited about that, getting that in the salad. Garlic's coming up beautifully. Look at this. Look at these peas. So we've got some purple peas there. We've got some other peas. Oops, I forgot this row. Okay. What's in this row? Let, <clears throat> lettuce, beets. Oh yes, tons of beets. I've got three or four different varieties of beets and I've planted them probably about four inches apart. So they're all coming up. I'm gonna be thinning those um, in a little bit. These ones are coming up even better. So I'm gonna be thinning those and I'm gonna use the beet greens to eat. Okay, so we'll be using the beet greens to eat and we've got some lettuce coming up. And then this one is some um, beets as well. So I planted lots of beets this year, simply because they do, um, beets really keep well. So come on over here. All right, so this was the main purpose of what we were gonna chat about today. Luke, put it up. Yes. There. All right, there we go. So the main purpose of what we were gonna chat about today was supports. So this is a pea, shoot, uh, pea support system. So I've planted peas over there as well, and I, you notice I've planted them close to the fence because they're going to climb. So when they climb, they need support. Otherwise, they're going to fall flat, and they're going to rot in the ground, okay? They're going to mildew, and they won't produce. And the more, you, the more you support you give them, the more you pick them, the more they're going to produce. So these wires are going to provide all kinds of support. These are just posts. These are old ones that we used from livestock fencing, but you'll see <coughs> they have a thing that you use that you stick it in the ground. You can get these at Uncle Sid's, you can get them at Spencer's, they're just called a fence support, okay? And you can put those in there and just use those. They're not, exp they're not expensive and you can use them year to year. So you can see I've broke some off because we used them for livestock fencing, so I'm just repurposing those, okay? Now, the other thing you can do with peas is plant alder bushes in amongst them, okay? So that's kind of uh, really, uh, an old-fashioned tip and that is really good to uh, do so what I would do is take alder bushes and I would plant them uh, I would um, take alder branches and put them in amongst my peas uh, here and there and they will grow up the alder bushes so that's an old-fashioned tip and I uh, worked uh, in long-term care uh, for a while and I got to talk to all the older people about gardening and of course my grandfather always gardened and my my dad and everybody always uh, you know grew gardens 
or so that I was around. So I've seen this done many, many times and it works beautifully. So don't go out and buy a lot of plastic or metal or anything like that. Just use what you can. If you've got some alder bushes around, take those, plant them really, really thick, close together, about an inch together, and plant them in amongst your peas. The peas will grow up the alder bushes. Wonderful support, okay? And you wanna do that when you plant, okay? I'm kind of behind the times a little bit um, with my tomatoes and, and my beans, um, because uh, you want to actually no, I'm not because I haven't put those in yet But when I get those in I want to make sure that the supports that I want them to grow into are there already It's really really hard to do your supports after Okay, so you want to make sure that whatever you're growing if it needs support you put that in before it gets growing Okay, because you really do not want to um you do not want to uh, get have them growing and then have to grow, put supports in and what will happen is the uh, branches will break off you'll lose stems you'll lose things and it won't uh, it won't be nice okay so we don't want to do that so um, in this bed we have some onions and shallots and uh, another section of leeks um, over here the garlic's still coming up beautifully. Over here, we've got some, uh, uh, oh, and those chickens are going out today. They are getting out of my garden. I've noticed they've been just eating seeds and they're just not very helpful to the garden. They're the only three that can fit through the holes. So I'm putting up some chicken wire today. Do you wanna show over there? Yeah, those three are going today because they are not being conducive to the garden at all. And uh, they're actually uh, putting poop in the garden that I don't need. So I'm going to make sure I put up some chicken wire where I see they're getting in later today. So these two rows, um, see this is why you need to put markers at the end because I can't remember what I put in. Oh, spinach and kale. So the reason why I put spinach and kale over here, uh, kiddos, is because right here, Okay, it's going to be a giant cattle panel. And a cattle panel is just a big wire uh, mesh, uh, a big wire um, panel that is used for keeping livestock in and it's really, really sturdy. So what I'm gonna do is clip out, and I'd hope to have them in place for today. Back up, I'd hope to have them in place today, but um, they couldn't fit them on the truck last week, again, from Ocean Breeze in Overton and uh, they couldn't fit them on the truck next week so I'm picking them up tomorrow when I go get um, uh, when I go get the uh, um, meat hash so that's my plan anyway they will be attached to these and they the cattle panel will bend over I will cut off some of the bottom leaving some prongs down um, that will uh, anchor into the ground and I'll be able to plant be, pea, beans. So I'm planting all my beans in here and I'm going to plant two rows, one on one side of the panel, one on the other, uh, the whole way up here. And this will all be beans and the beans will grow up over the cattle panel. So that is um, where those are going. Now the reason why I planted the kale and spinach, back to that, the reason why I planted the kale and spinach over there is because this is going to provide a fair amount of shade. So anything that it kind of does better in cooler weather, and I don't uh, don't want to bolt or go to seed too quick, I'm going to plant sort of behind that shady area. So over here, I've got my spinach in. I've got a row of marigolds. Oh, I've planted so many marigolds all over the garden because they are fabulous for attracting the bees and getting all the pollinators in here. I've also got uh, a row of kale, and I'm going to let you in on a little secret, kiddos. I hate kale. Okay, I hate kale. But I've learned a little tip about kale. So with kale, and I don't think you like kale, do you, Lee? No, no. Uh, I don't think Charlie says either. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we're pretty much just a, you know, we like our lettuce and our salad mixes, but we're not really big into kale. So, but I've heard a wonderful tip and I'm gonna use it. I, uh, I had posted about not, uh, you know, trying kale chips and not liking kale chips. And someone told me that I can take that kale I can dehydrate it and I can make it into a powder and add it to smoothies and add it to uh, uh, soups and things like that in order to uh, add that the, 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 veg, the vitamins and the minerals of that kale and add that to, uh, to our uh, diet. So that is what I'm going to do because guess what, I really don't like kale raw and I'm sure I'm not the only one. So anyway. Um, <laughs> Oh, 
sorry. That was Charlene. She just found a package at the front of the house. She, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Trevor's mum's, my mother-in-law's Mother's Day present. So hopefully it's not in too bad shape. It's a, it's a, it's a picture of her with one of the pigs that she loves um, on it. And uh, she doesn't have Facebook, so don't worry, I'm not giving it away. <laughs> anyway, we told her it was coming. Um, she's going to be super pumped, I think, to uh, see it. She really has a soft spot for this uh, pig named Dixie. Um, that lives near her and uh, we were able to get a nice picture of her with it on a mug and a tea in the corner. So happy about that. I'm happy we found that. So that was good. Um, <clears throat> and so these are going to be for zucchini. These mounds. So I have them all ready. I'm going to put the zucchini in. And the reason why I'm putting zucchini here is because zucchini are not a root vegetable. They grow up above the ground. Okay. And you, as you can see, I've got a tree root here from this tree here. So, and um, because I haven't gotten rid of this tree yet, I really am sort of on the fence about what to do with it. Um, we're just kind of letting it stay its course, um, but it might be providing too much shade and too many roots. Um, we may cut that over there. Um, here is some more uh, beds for the, for the zucchini. So I'll be putting two plants in each one. So that will give me a total of oh, about 10 zucchini plants, and that's gonna be lovely. So, about that. I'm um, getting moving. So, now, I'm finally getting some uh, asparagus tips coming up. Finally. I don't know if I have them planted in the right spot because I don't really think that they are doing well at all there, but we're going to give them a little bit of go because it was cold. Oh, here. Look at this one. Right here. Look at that. That's a beautiful one. So maybe this is okay because to be honest I just planted them this year and they were three-year-old crowns and it may take uh, another year or so so I'll let them sit another year and we'll see how we go oh. all right so over here so over here we have four rows I talked about having uh, 400 pounds of potatoes planted hopefully if every one of these come up they will uh, produce um, two to three pounds each plant, and I will roughly have about 400 pounds of potatoes. Um, I've got parsnips in, I've got a row of parsnips, and I've got a row of turnip in. Um, and then what I did down here, so then I'm gonna put another couple rows of carrots, um, because I like to do what's called succession planting. So making sure that um, the, uh, I always have carrots coming up, like they're always gonna be, when, once I harvest some, I'll harvest some more. And, oh, I'm going to show you after. I've got some blue and purple potatoes to put in, too. So my good friend Catherine Adams from Bow Truckle Farm, check them out um, on Facebook. They did a wonderful, wonderful thing this year. Um, they uh, put together like 250 seed packages for kids to uh, be able to plant. Um, it was absolutely fabulous. We were all part of a program that uh, was going to... Um, start seeds in the schools and when the schools got look, you cover the thing. No, no, no. Huh. Well you get your finger in front. No, no, okay. <laughs> Alright. So uh, we were all part of a program that was gonna go in and uh, do some seed uh, experiments with the school with the Department of Agriculture. Um, those all got cancelled of course and uh, I decided to take this route. Catherine has done a wonderful thing as well with uh, putting uh, Catherine and Damien and Lydia and Lucy and Dave and Brenda have put together 250 packages to be delivered to kids to start their own seeds. And they've been doing no contact delivery. It's been wonderful. I've been seeing lots of great comments and people putting in, uh, children putting in their seeds and starting their own. So that was fabulous. Shout out to Bow Truffle Farm for that. Um, we have over here, so I've got the rhubarb all in. That's all coming up beautifully. Got some lovely rhubarb in. Um, blueberry bushes are coming up. Um, I've got a, gonna put another five in over there this year. And over here, well, this is fun, guys. Okay, so these are going to be, and I know they just look like dirt right now. It's not very fun. Red kidney beans and J and uh, that's chamomile. So that's all flowers. And then I did, and I brought out a pretty garden marker. So now we're down to like just <laughs> writing on a <laughs> piece of blue sharpie. Uh, Jacob's beans. So you know when you get baked beans, guys. So baked beans. Um, oh, no, no, don't step on the rose. Uh, when you get baked beans, they're made from a dried bean. And 
And I have never grown dried beans before. I know that sounds funny, but I never have. Um, it's just, you know, sometimes it's easy for the few times that we go and get them, um, that we have them, um, because there's not many in my house that like them. But we do eat a lot of red kidney beans. So um, baked beans, red kidney beans, we put a lot of kidney beans in chili, things like that. Growing some of those this year to dry and preserve. So that's a little experiment for me. I only used a couple rows because I just didn't want to use up a lot of garden space on it. I want to see how they grow, see if it's worth it for me to grow them or, uh, you know, how that, how that goes. It's good to have a challenge when you uh, garden, you know. It's good for you to put something in and try something new and see what they need, right? So that is a little bit of what's going on in the garden right now. Oh, carrots. Guys, look, the carrots. So... This whole bed here is carrots, but they take forever to germinate. So don't give up on your carrots, okay? Carrots will take at least two to three weeks to germinate. Um, so I can see them coming up right over there. I can see they're just literally little, little, little blades. Um, they are not, uh, they're nothing uh, really thick. And uh, you will, you will, uh, you will think that they didn't take, you will be discouraged, and you will think, oh, I'm going to have to replant all those. That is not the case. Do not worry. Um, you are uh, perfectly right. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's a weed and what's a flower. Okay, and I think that what's a flower. Um, so basically, yeah, we want to, uh, oh, make sure that, um, you're not replanting if you don't have to. So give them a little bit. I'll give them like, you know, another couple weeks or so. And you do lose some to the birds and things like that. So in time, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's a little bit what's going on today. So we have this lovely mulch all put down. Uh, we have cardboard underneath of it. So that's going to let me right up to my garden. I've just got a bird bath that we, uh, that I found, um, that we're going to be putting right here to kind of bring the birds in and provide some uh, water for the bees. Um, we've got that, that, uh, house will be going over there. Now that section over there, this section here, is going to all be peppers and cucumbers and tomatoes. Okay, so... I'm going to be making tomato supports out of this. Okay, some of my tomato plants are going to be huge. Some of them are what's called indeterminate tom tomatoes or determinate. And uh, when they are like that, they can they they can grow really, 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 almost sometimes six feet tall. And they're very heavy producers. So I'll be making some tomato supports out of this. We've got plenty of this wire left from livestock fences. Um, the other thing that I'll be doing is remember those cattle panels I talked about? We're gonna be putting uh, a cattle panel here and a cattle panel here. I'll be covering them with plastic because it's important when you grow your tomatoes that they don't get a lot of overhead water. And I found that that's what really was causing me to only have green tomatoes here for a long time. We have a short growing season in Southwest Nova Scotia a very short growing season and uh, I just found that they weren't getting red and yes I know I can use all kinds of tips and tricks to take them in the house and ripen them wrap them in newspaper put them in a dark place you can ripen them up I made a lot of chow chow oh my goodness no kind but um, kiddos I think if you really can figure out a way and I don't have a greenhouse okay and I don't know if I really want to invest in a big greenhouse I really like the fact that I can take this down it's temporary um, I like that, that I can uh, reuse it. I can move it because I like garden rotation. Um, I like being able to rotate, not plant the same things in the same place every year. So that's something that you want to look up. That's your, that's your, uh, so not homework, but that's your thing to look up today is garden rotation. Okay, so you want to make sure that you are rotating every year, not planting things in the same spot. Okay, um, some people have a really elaborate system. I really don't. peppers peppers this year and we're gonna have those we're gonna put that greenhouse plastic over it okay you can buy that at Wilson's in a big roll Wilson's home hardware big roll it's very economical it's $30 the cattle panels I am not sure how much they are they're not it's not exorbitant at all they're used and they're really heavy duty they're heavier than this they don't um, 
they will they will just bend enough that we'll get them up into a circle um, they will stay in the ground I'll anchor them in but these are this is definitely less sturdy this is going to be used just for tomato supports and things like that those tomato plants I will put on either side of that can cattle panel and then I will tie them with a piece of soft string or bailing twine let's look under here I've had this yeah so look at that look at the worms Luke look at that so I've had this down for a while this is what I want to do this is what I wanted to do was to kill some of the grass I'm gonna move this over and uh, do this again um, I really wanted this to be a nice uh, area to put those tomatoes in without a lot of weeds and things like that. So I used an old rug, I did that, now I'm going to move this around, put it over here and we're going to do the same thing again. So I've had that there for a while and then that had just helps with keeping the, uh, look at all this, look at this, isn't that great? Look at those. So those worms. Um, I will put some uh, some ground up eggshells, okay? And when I say ground up, like they're gonna literally be a powder, okay? So they will be a powder, and I will put those in amongst my tomatoes so that they add a little calcium. Um, and I'm um, gonna add those to the top. So that's about it for tomatoes. I'm gonna, not going to be putting them outside because they, uh, tomato plants are very, very sensitive, okay? They will, they will shrivel up and I will cry. <laughs> I will cry if I lose my tomato plants. I have babied these plants since the beginning of April, middle of April. How are we doing for time? Yeah. I have babied these plants and I will cry, guys, if I lose them, okay? Um, I've put out a lot of heart and soul, which I really think um, adds to the uh, taste of your vegetables. I know that sounds funny, but they have done experiments with that. I'd love, I'm going to about the experiment that they did about talking to plants and putting some love into plants. Uh, my grandson and I were talking about this the other day and uh, you know just like anything else if you put a lot of love and time and energy uh, those plants do better than they grow more than if they, if they um, didn't experiment and uh, on a farm and what they did was uh, on this farm they put some seedlings in the ground they left them people were busy they stayed away from the farm for i can't remember how long they left them they didn't pay any attention to them they just did what needed to be done and they left them this they did the same thing on another area of the farm okay same soil they made sure everything was pretty much the same except they tended to it they tended to it they talked to it they went and visited it often they went in the morning they did all that and those plants grew more prolifically and and more um, you know sort of produced more and uh, were greener and more lush than the ones that weren't talked to and loved and doted on so gardens are work okay and gardens are they like I'm gonna be you know heavy into this I've been out here yesterday I got sunburned you can see mm. and uh, that brings me to another thing always make sure you wear your sunscreen that Sun is hotter than you think even now <laughs> not right now <laughs> it's gray I know um, but uh, so you want to make sure that you uh, wear your sunscreen and that you're outside and that you're tending to your garden, tending to your plants, and uh, you will uh, make see them growing, um, you know, much more prolifically. So peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, squash, sunflowers, pumpkins, um, some other things are not going to go in the garden, okay, until after this next this frost is done okay it says may 12th but i think we're gonna wait until about the first week of june to put ours in okay i really was hoping we could do it but by the judging of the of the uh warmth of the air today and the soil warmth it is not time yet so we're gonna wait on those we're gonna put those into um we're gonna wait and put those in probably around the first week of june um and uh but we'll, we'll go by the weather anyway we might get a hot snap which would be lovely um, yeah, so there is uh, a number of, uh, you know, you're putting them in containers, you can start to plant them in containers and get them started now and bring them in um, at night um, during the risk of frost. So if you're doing containers, go for it, okay? And um, if you're doing containers, um, the best thing I think when you're planting um, a good one spot in containers, I think the best thing that you can do 
when you're planting in containers is to um, get, get varieties that grow well in containers, okay? So anything with the word bush in it, anything with the word bush in it is going to give you a beautiful harvest in a container. Okay, it's made to be low and bushy, okay? Unless you're putting a trell trellising system in those containers, um, you want to make sure that uh, you're getting a bush variety, okay, so that you can grow well. And I know this garden looks huge, and it is really huge, and I'll be tending to it for a long time. Um, but you have to remember we eat out of this garden um, a lot, and it's going to be, uh, you know, the source of most of our food. So I don't care whether you're growing in tote bins. I don't care whether you've only got a 4 by 4 plot. I'm just really proud uh, of you for uh, growing and learning more about gardening by tuning in. And uh, I'm really happy that you're here. And I really hope that uh, by next week, um, you know, you're feeling much more confident about uh, trying to garden, trying to grow things, and uh, that you're learning stuff so that every year you get better and better. I learn things all the time. Okay, and uh, I never stop learning. I listen to podcasts, I read books, and I uh, talk to other gardeners, and I view YouTube channels, uh, you know, and, and videos like this that help me out um, with that. So, um, you know, and uh, I, I really uh, am proud of you for doing that. Oh, the other thing that I was just going to show you really quick, and I set it down so I wouldn't forget, <laughs> is uh, I'm going to put this, uh, this is what I'm actually going to be putting my tomatoes in this year. I'm going to be planting them in, so I'm going to put this down. Um, this conserves moisture, warms the soil, and controls weeds. So it's um, basically, it was $7. I'm going to try it. It's going to be an experiment this year. I've not used it before. I've usually just used a mulch down, but I'm actually going to be putting uh, the tomato film down and see how it goes. Um, what I'll do is make an X with a slit. I'll put down the, uh, the, the uh, film and I'll make an X with a slit and then I'll put the tomato plant in that. I'll dig quite deep down because some of the tomato plants I have right now are like this tall and uh, I'm going to plant quite deep down because tomatoes actually grow the whole way up their stem. They shoot out roots the whole way up their stem. Okay, so you want to plant them quite deep because the, the, the deeper you plant them, the better root system they're going to have. Okay, and that's where tomatoes draw their water from. Not from their leaves, because you don't want that overhead water with tomatoes. You want to actually be watering at the root, okay, and you want to... <laughs> <laughs> you want to be watering at the root and you want to make sure that uh, their tomatoes are staying nice and nice, uh, you know, quite off. So we're going to try that, see what that is. Oh, this is the other thing, uh, hummingbird seed garden. I'm really excited about this. We're going to throw that in the ground too. Um, and uh, these are annuals, so they will uh, need to be planted every year. So anyway, it's Jennifer from Yellow Brick Road Farm. Thanks for tuning in to Edible Gardening for Kids, um, families, beginners, adults, anybody who wants to watch. I'm really happy that you joined me again and uh, next week will be our last week um, for uh, for uh, this series and I'm really uh, excited to uh, hopefully have all the supports in place for you and we'll do the last garden tour and uh, I'm going to give a shout out to some of the people who sent me uh, photos and uh, you know uh, sort of told me what they were doing in the garden and sent me pictures of their greenhouse or what they're growing and I'm going to put uh, those all together and put them on my page and uh, really really excited for everybody to uh, get growing and uh, to, to eat from your own garden this year and uh, remember that when you eat from your own garden you're eating that soil and that soil okay so your soil health is so important that soil is what makes your food taste better okay so the closer you can keep that soil to you better all right take care everyone